Good morning, Fort McMurray, Wood Buffalo, and the rest of the world. You've tuned in to the Max City Morning Show. I am your host, Elliot Pierre, and we're going to start the show off the same way we start every show off, with a moment of gratitude. I know you could be doing a million other things with your time, so the fact that you're spending with us truly does mean the world to me. So thank you. On that note, Tanner, hit him with the intro. How's she caught me, loves? You're listening to the Max City Morning Show. And we are back. Okay, I'm excited about today uh, because we have somebody that I don't know, so that's exciting, one. <laughs> and two, uh, he's a comedian, and I love stand-up. So I'm really excited to talk to this guy today. Um, as everybody at home knows by now, I don't introduce my guests because they can do a better job at that than myself. So on that note, sir, can you tell everybody who you are and what you're about? Yes, I can. I am Steve McGowan, a comedian from Vancouver. Thank you for having me on the show. You're more than welcome. So... Let's hear about this. How long have you been in the stand-up game for? Uh, 12 years, but if you take away COVID, roughly 10. Okay. So 10 years. 10 years? 10 years. We'll go with a decade. Okay. Yeah. A decade of comedy. Yeah. So Professional, maybe the last six. Okay. And so primarily is like Vancouver your spot? That's where you hone your skills or you uh, you go on the road and do this? Often? Yeah. I mean, when you start out, I think like any comedian, you start out in your hometown yeah. and, uh, and and cut your teeth. Yeah. And uh, Vancouver definitely is a uh, home base um, for sure. And then, you know, as you do it more, you, you travel a little bit. Yeah. Um, that when you're starting out, you, you kind of, you know, you're the opening act for a headliner that takes you on the road. That's or right. Whatever. And uh, I remember one of my first road gigs Opening for another comedian, uh, we t- we took a, a really shitty car, as you do. I think that's kind of like the rite of passage is even if you have the option to take a nice car, you don't. Yeah. You take the shittiest car. I think it was like a Volkswagen Rabbit. Okay. I don't know what year. Had no snow tires. <laughs> and we ah. went in. This is, this is going back years and years and years ago. And we did it in the dead of winter. And we yeah. drove from Vancouver. Uh, sorry, we did it from the island, actually. We did some shows on the Vancouver Island. And then we drove to uh, Saskatchewan. Okay. And some places up in there, Regina and stuff. Yeah. And it was it was terrible. Yeah. But it, looking back at it, it was like, God, I never have to do that again. We did it about five or six more times. Right. That particular drive. Yeah. Almost died. Too long of a story. But yeah, uh, yeah no. It, so you, you you do, you venture around. Uh, the more you do it, the more that you you travel and stuff. And then right. you get good, you get better. And uh, and then you, 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 you know, tour around a little bit more. And yeah. uh, so in the last few years, yeah, I was able to, uh, to travel Canada. Okay. Um, have done some stuff in the States in the past, but of course it's, it's hard when you you know, don't have your proper papers and all that kind of stuff. So, That's right. So, yeah, I've toured around Canada and I've uh, been very fortunate enough to work with a lot of Canada's uh, best comedians. And uh, it's been a lot of fun, man. I, I Looking back at 10 years, it's like, holy shit, 10 yeah. years. Um, there's a lot that's happened. And yeah. and uh, if I could change anything, I would change everything. Yeah. No, I wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, it, it, you know, you're always learning. I mean, 10 years, I'm, 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 so 10 years sounds like a lot. But right. I think in comedy years, it's there's it's, 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 I'm still a puppy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm still yeah. always learning. And, and especially after COVID, mm-hmm. I think every comedian will tell you that, you know, it's kind of like your re- things reopening and everything. We're That's just right. kind of getting back into it. And it's uh-huh. just like, oh shit. Yeah. I forgot. I forgot how to tell jokes. That's right. You start telling jokes, but then you have that experience behind you. And you're like, oh no, I remember how to tell jokes again. And then you're just kind of trying to find your bearings. And that's what it's been like for me anyway. Uh, that's right. Lately. But it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. And through during COVID, were you able to do any because I know like there's a bunch of comedians that have gone online and tried different things, like maybe hosting a podcast or doing clips, or right. you see what like Andrew Schultz is doing. Right. Um, he's definitely changed the scope of and it's not stand up, obviously, but it's yeah. still a great form of entertainment and comedy sure what were you able to do to keep yourself a little bit sharp during nothing. covid nothing absolutely <laughs> nothing. i love it yeah. well, i wasn't doing nothing <laughs> oh, I, uh, I woo! <laughs> that is not apple juice kids yeah. this is a morning show <laughs> uh, <laughs> no i was uh you know what's funny is, uh, is and, and i really really uh respect that uh, a lot of comedians I think for the most part were staying on top of stuff and staying, you know, uh, creative yeah. and finding outlets to, to fire off that creativity. That is really good apple juice, by the way. That right, is. Listen, we only serve Ooh. the finest of apple juices here. Freshly squeezed. <laughs> we have a tree, we have a tree in the backyard, me and Tanner, we go pluck apples every day <laughs> right. and we squeeze them with our bare hands. <laughs> Elliot squeezes, I stomp. There that's, you go. Yes. I could taste a bit of squeeze and a little stomp yeah, at the end. It's got right. the, the aftertaste of stomp. Yeah. Um, no, I really, uh, I really, I, I just found it very, because when everything was happening, nobody knew what the hell was going on. It's like, oh, shit. And, um, 
and and at first it's kind of like I think a lot of people are like oh we'll just wait it out right, That's right. everything's closed okay sure yeah. um, financially like I was I was doing comedy full time for about a year right. before the world got herpes and everything shut down That's right and so I was I was I was very happy to kind of I wanted to do comedy full time because I hate money yeah and, uh, <laughs> and it was like ah you know I I, I want to do that as I've always worked a job while doing comedy, but I was like, I think it's time to just kind of do the comedy full time. This was the plan before COVID anyway, was to do comedy, uh, maybe try some acting, get into that. I've done very little acting, but try that, maybe Mm -hmm. voice stuff, whatever. And then everything happened. So it was like, just kind of reset. Right. So, but when I saw people doing the things that they were doing with the podcast and, and the, the, you know, the zoom shows and all that kind of stuff, I was enjoying watching it, but I didn't, I didn't feel, I just wasn't like, I was like, ah, you know, I kind of found myself sort of delving into other forms of writing that I always wanted to do when I was oh, much younger. Nice. Yeah. Like, sure, I'm a comedian uh, and I love comedies and everything, but I'm also a big horror fan and I love thrillers, revenge movies, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, huge Wes Craven, John Carpenter fan. So when I was younger, yeah, I would write all these little, you know, short stories, little horror stories and stuff. Right. And then that just kind of went away. And then I started doing comedy uh, when I was 30. So when I turned 30, I was like, I'm going to do comedy, try stand-up. Yeah. Fell in love with it. Right. And that form of writing, I just kind of never really went back to it all. Mm. So during, so the point is during COVID, uh, I found myself kind of going in the opposite direction of writing comedy. Okay. And I, and I just kind of reopened my brain and was just like, oh yeah, that idea I had from, you know, when I was like 20, that, that seems like, and then I just started writing and then I couldn't stop. And I was like, maybe I want to write a book. Right. Maybe I want to, what did you do? And you're like, I'm a dick yeah. and fart comedian. Yeah, yeah. What did you do? See, I wrote a book. Right. Yeah, and yeah, just, yeah. But then I was like, I had this idea for this horror thriller thing or whatever. But then I'm like, I just kept seeing it as as scenes. So mm. I'm like, shit, I, maybe it's a script. Yeah. Maybe I want to get into script writing. So I've looked into that. And nice. for the last like seven or eight months, I've been really just opening into this world of, of script writing. And I have some friends that do it very successfully. Yeah. Um, so I've been, you know, picking their brains like, hey, why do you get started? Yeah. So yeah. I've been doing that. And really, really just been in love with that. Like, okay, this is great. So then I found my, my creative my creative outlet was kind of shooting yeah. in a different direction. Then I was like, okay, I'm not writing any comedy. I was tired of the jokes I was telling before COVID anyway. Mm-hmm. It was time for me to write a new 40-minute set, which yeah. will take time. Oh, well, yeah. Um, so I was like, eh, maybe I'm just going to go and start watching shows and just kind of live it and breathe it and be around it again. But then when everything started opening up, I'm like, shit, I need to write some jokes. That's right. And then I just kind of shot back into it. So I'm doing that writing and then I'm writing new jokes and getting back into comedy. It's like, yeah, why was I thinking about yeah. not going back to the stage? You know what I mean? Yeah. You're just like, no, it was. And then when you start doing it, it's like, yeah, like I, I said, remember. You just re- yeah, you remember. You're, You're just like, oh yeah, okay. No, this is, this is where I need to be. Yeah. All right, my man. We're at the part of the show called the Max City Minute. Okay. Tanner has some questions for you. I don't know what he's going to ask. Okay. Because we do zero preparation before our guests show Perfect. up. Perfect. So Tanner. Like uh, I do before any of my sets. What, what's your process? Yeah. I poo and yeah. I drink. <laughs> there you go, Tanner. Hit him with the Max City Minute. Well, that actually leads into the first question of what is one ritual you have for a pre-show? Pre-show is, I, I like, are we talking pre-show at the show? Yeah, like before you go on stage. I pace. I never sit. I'm always pacing. They're like, oh, just have a seat. I'm just like, no. And I kind of tell the staff, too, that if you see me pacing around going to the washroom a lot, I'm not doing drugs. I have to let them yeah. know that. Um, I get very anxious. I get very hyper. Um, somebody once asked me before if I get nervous. Yes, but I turn, it in, I turn the anxiety and the nerves into excitement and energy, and then I use that. Question number two. What is the weirdest story you have from touring? <clears throat> Probably when I had sex with a heckler's mom. I've only told the story three times, but that, that just comes to my... It was a very long time, but we don't have enough time for that. We do after. <laughs> <laughs> Question number three. What is your favorite thing about single moms? <laughs> uh, one's got to be that they always have a half-eaten blizzard in their, uh, in their freezer and Costco cards because I, I have commitment issues. <laughs> <laughs> Question number four. What is one person you've made laugh that sticks out to you? Oh, God, that's a great question. One person that I made laugh that stuck out to me was probably Dave Coulier when I made him uh, almost spit out his beer when we were having dinner. Yeah. And your final question, what is one way you practice your skills in comedy that might surprise people? Sorry, say it again. 
What is one way you practice your skills in comedy that would surprise people? Probably, and I'm only saying this because I've been told this and I never noticed, it's probably my confidence to just um, not, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I will say that until the point of getting on stage and then I'm just like, Ugh, and then you just, yeah, confidence, I guess. And those have been your five questions. There okay. we go. So when you were a kid growing up, what kind of, who, who did you look up to in regards to like, I really think this person is funny? When I was growing up, I, well, I, you know, I, I was born in 80, so I grew up in the 80s and yeah. 90s kid and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. I think early on, like, my dad was always a big fan of, you know, George Carlin. Uh, so I grew up watching, you know, the, the originals, George Carlin, Richard Pryor, Andrew Dice Clay, uh, all that. Okay. So I think, man, looking up, I mean, you know, Bill Burr's a big inspiration, of course. Yeah. Uh, but growing up. Yeah. Probably, I, I mean, Andrew Dice Clay was just such a showman. Yeah, he was. You know yeah. what I mean? It was yeah. just, it was pussy joke, put dick joke. Oh, it was just dirty. And watching that, you're like, you can say that? Yeah. M maybe? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, of course, it was, you know, comedy that I wasn't allowed to watch. That's right. So I think, that but just, good. yeah, and just the whole, it was just the whole, you know, the leather jacket, the, the, just the studded, and just the massive crowds, and it was just, it was a show. Yeah. So, I mean, it was like, whoa, that's what... That's what comedy is. That's yeah. what show business is. That's and right. that's why I'm in Fort that's Mac. Right. There we go. So that's my last <laughs> little, because I know we're running out of time here. Um, how? You got lots of time. Do we? Yeah, you got eight minutes. Oh, sweet. Okay. I talk well, a lot. I'm still going to. I have... haven't given the host a chance to no, talk. No, I don't. Like, the whole point is to not hear me talk. <laughs> I was gonna say, and that's why he loves you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank so you. Thank what you. brought you here? A plane. A plane. I'll there show you go. That's better. That's, yeah, exactly. The door is right over there. Should we go watch Steve McGowan tonight yeah. at Bailey's? Is that his joke? No, yeah. we're not going. <laughs> um, what brought me here was a uh, fantastic comedian, booker, uh, and showrunner, Renee Manners, there you go. Um, who I have become online friends with, and this is the first time meeting in person, and okay. it's a very good relationship, and we're both, um, I think, quirky yeah. and um, troubled. Yeah. And it's a uh, fun way to say crazy. Yeah. I was trying to find ways of say, yeah, and uh, yeah. So um, we actually, I think, I believe, and she talked about it last night on stage, and she was like, you know, I saw this guy's Instagram stories and his dad, because I'm always filming my dad. My dad is, you know, our parents are always the, the funny people. We get our traits from them, so yeah. I'm always filming my dad, who's just a, a total character on his own. Yeah. And uh, she saw that stuff, and then and then last night she was like, I saw his dad's stuff online, the stories he posts, and I just figured I need to get this guy out. So actually, my dad got me the booking there you go yeah so i'm there just here go. i guess i think she thought she booked my dad yeah uh and, and then i showed up even more <laughs> impressive you showed up yeah but i love doing um you know the small town tours and stuff like that it's one mm -hmm. of the things you know during uh, my small career of comedy so mm -hmm. far uh, doing the clubs and the casinos and stuff like that are always a lot of fun and the big venues and everything yeah and the festivals and all that and all that stuff but the it's the small town tours it's you know northern bc northern uh, uh, alberta i've been almost everywhere in alberta it's my first time in fort mac okay definitely not my first time in alberta my, my first time this far north yeah and uh and just the vibe and, and it's been so long since doing and coming back and starting to headline again i think the small yeah. town tours these are the best mm. because the audiences there's just People's hair are let down. They're yeah. just, they're very, it seems wild. Remember the first few small town shows I did, I was like, oh my God, Jesus, this is the crowd. And then yeah. the show starts and you're like, oh, I never want to leave. That's right. You know, that's right. So. And it's different in regards to when you come to a small town, like it's not a comedy club that you would normally go to. Not at all. No. Right. And so these people that you have, they're just, they're there to be entertained, but on a yeah. different level. It, exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's a different vibe. When you walk into a packed pub or bar in a small town yeah. it is a different vibe than you get from going to a, like say a sold out comedy club yeah it is it's, it's a very different it's a different animal and it's just and it can be very intimidating at first yeah it can be You're like to a, to a young comic who's just doing the road for the first time going to these small town mm -hmm. uh, pubs and stuff it can be like ooh, kind of overwhelming yeah but once that show starts like you said they're there for the show yeah this is the entertainment they want to be they're hungry for the comedy and then yeah. they just you have that i don't think i've done any small town show where I've had to, um, you know, try to get them on board yeah. for like the first 10 minutes and try to like, it's always just right from when the show starts right. to the show ends yeah. and even talking with them afterwards and stuff, you know, yeah. you just feel that, that instant love for the, for the show and, and it's just a lot of fun. It's yeah. A lot of fun. How do you get up here? Like I know by plane, but like, does it like out of your own pocket or does somebody book you or? This was, this was, this was taken care of by the booking um, um, management team 
and which is always nice as well. But there are some, you know, you got to work out different negotiations in different ways and stuff like that. You get sponsored or anything? You can't get sponsored. Yep. Okay. Yep. Do you have a sponsor? I do. It's Renee Manners. And there you go. Yeah. Renee Manners. <laughs> of, uh, and Bailey's. And Lisa, there's a Lisa. I oh, Lisa Hardigan. Yeah, that's it, Lisa Hardigan. That's right. Yes, Lisa that Hardigan. That was the name that popped in my head first. I'm sorry, I was actually looking for more whiskey. Yeah. I thought. Well, we don't, <laughs> have, we don't we have any. That's we don't apple. have any. I we thought don't, Apple no Juice was sponsoring this. That's no. why I was. Uh, Lisa Hardigan. Uh, okay. Uh, yes. So, Lisa Hardigan. Yes. Bailey's and Renee Manners are yes. the sponsors. Yes. You got to talk about the sponsors. Yes. That's what you I've do. learned on yeah, the show. That's, yeah, Although that's we don't right. have any sponsors. <laughs> when people come, they're just like, hey, I got to plug my thing. They, so. Lisa and Renee and Bailey's, they were very, uh, very gracious and awesome to. Uh, to invite me and have me and host me here, and it's been uh, it's been really great so far. That's awesome. So I thank them. Now, as a comedian, like I, I love watching stand up, and there's this one guy um, you've probably heard of him, Jim Gaffigan. I've heard, heard the name. Yes. He, yeah, he's, yes. he's kind of a big deal. I yeah. Guess. Um, his last stand up special that he put out on Prime, like he went to all these different places, and and Canada was, was some on of them. there. That's right. Yeah. And this guy in his sets was telling so many like banger jokes about the area and i'm like he must have toured around for a little bit do a little history to, a little history to like yeah, get yeah, this yeah when you come to a, a smaller town is that something that you try to do totally. or you just like you just leave it alone? totally i mean yeah yeah definitely absolutely whenever i'm at a lot of comics do some comics don't like to do it they're like yeah. nah, it's kind of a hack thing to do but i don't think it's a hack thing to do when you're doing yeah. um because it's i wouldn't say hack it's a very kind of common thing to do when you're doing the small towns it's always what I do anyways is, is, is try to find out what the other towns around are, like the competing towns. Like if you're okay. in Kelowna, Kelowna, BC hates Penticton, BC. Right. So when you're in Penticton, you talk shit about Kelowna. Right, right, right. And the audience doesn't love you. <laughs> you can yeah. do no wrong. But when That's you're it. in Kelowna, you yeah. talk shit about Penticton. Yeah. You don't let them know that. Yeah, it's like yeah, two yeah. turds in a toilet and you're just yeah. kind of poking each one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think it is good. But sometimes you're in the small town. You're like, hey, what's a shitty small town around here? And sometimes yeah. they'll look at you and be like, oh. Yeah. Sorry, what's a great good town around yeah, here? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. But it is good to do your homework, know the area. Yeah. Um, I, I came in a day early, and Renee showed me around some places mm -hmm. and uh, showed me around Fort Mac and stuff like that. Right. So, I mean, it is, especially if you've never been to that town before. Yeah. It is good to know a little bit. You don't want to go up, you know, dry and be like, hey, what do you guys What do you guys it's do? It's always here? more fun, I find, anyway, to be like, oh, hey, so I heard about dry. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah. that's right. So, uh, that's it. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, that is something com comedians do, though. And you got to be quick. That's what blew my oh, mind, because yeah. like, I actually did a little bit of my own research about... Uh, I'm going to call him Jim, because we're on a first-name basis. There you go, of course. Like, yeah. He wasn't in those locations for that long. And that's what I love about like Just the brain of a stand-up comedian. Yeah. How are you coming up with... like You've been here for like a day, right. and already you're trying to accumulate. Yeah. And like it's not easy to be like funny on stage. Like you got to put work into it. Yeah. And so for you to... like observe write down and tweak and then you don't know if that's jokes gonna work that's because right you haven't told it you're that's like well right. i'm in their city i'm in their town i'm gonna try to talk about this hopefully it'll yeah you, you gotta have those bangers that works right out of the gate yeah um and like you said you gotta be quick you gotta also to go back you gotta be confident in that's that right like, know that yeah i know that this this i was here for you gotta do a little bit of the homework yeah that's right and find out what is but you do you have to be kind of that's why it's good to ask also yeah. too when you're in the town ask Ask around. Um, and if it backfires, yeah. use that. That's right. Right? You're like, like, I'm not from here. I'm not, yeah. yeah, I'm not from here. Oh, yeah. I don't know. My bad. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that isn't the place here? Oh, what yeah. do I know? Yeah, you know, what do I know? That's yeah. right. Yeah. So in regards to, you, you said you're trying to put together a 40-minute set, which I always find interesting in regards to, is that the game plan as a headliner that you need to have that 45 minutes to an hour? Or is that just a bar that comedians try to have like that kind of material in the yeah, tank? Yeah, I mean like a like a club set, a regular headlining set is yeah about 40, 45. Okay. Um, but you know, there's always wiggle room. Sometimes it goes long. Yeah. Uh, some of the other comics could go short or whatever. Or if it's just like, like I said, like a pub show. Pub shows never stick to the 90 yeah. minute, um, you know, time frame. There's, yeah. It usually starts a little bit later. People show up late, you know. That's right. Wait for the babysitters to come. Okay, now we can go to the show right. kind of type thing. So, uh, and then it could go like I said, like uh, when you you fall in love with these crowds so easily, yeah. And you don't want to get off stage. So it's like uh, so. Usually, I kind of prep small town shows. I usually kind of prep for for being ready to do an hour. 
Right. Um, now, is that an hour of material? Not no. necessarily crowd at all. Work. No. Yeah, crowd work. And I find that a lot of, especially in small towns, is the crowd work. Yeah. And then you get jokes from that. Like, there's been a lot yeah. of times where I'm like, oh, man, I don't know what to do. Is this, is this joke going to work? I'm tired of telling that joke. I should be writing more. I don't know if I can fill this 45 minutes. And then you get up there and you may be told half an hour of mm -hmm. jokes and then the rest was just crowd. Like, but great. these are also jokes that you can't, you can't bottle that lightning twice. That's right. You're talking to this guy, yeah. Frank in the front row and his wife and then you just have this connection and then everybody's a part of it. Nah, blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah, you're yeah. not going to be able to do it at the next show. That's Frank's right. not going to be at the next show. That's right. So you just kind of take what you can and that's where the mat, that's, that's the good stuff. Magic, that's yeah. the magic stuff. Well, Board, man. I'm coming to check you out on uh, Saturday night. You're going to so, suffer me one way yeah, or another. Gonna, right? yeah. I'll, I'll have to bring some of my apple juice with me. My oh, home, for sure. Apple we'll drink apple juice at and before the there show. There you go. So uh, this is part of the show where we're done, but everybody gets a shameless shout out or plug. So the mic's on you, the camera's on you, you're up. Okay. Uh, my name's Steve McGowan, like we're talking about. We're going to be at Bailey's Pub here in Fort Mac tonight and tomorrow being Saturday the 11th, 8 p.m. Uh, you can go to... I guess their website or show up. It's limited seating. Uh, Got to wear your mask here now, right? That's the thing in uh, Alberta now. Your yeah, guess is good everybody. as mine. Okay, <laughs> got to wear your mask. Uh, so please come out to that. And uh, I also have a my first comedy album that's going to be coming out called Pleasantly Offensive. That will be available next month, which is, what are we in, September? October. It'll be October. that will be available on all the platforms. And you can follow me at the Steve McGowan. I had to put a V before my name because there is a Christian singer in Portland with the same name. <laughs> And as you can tell, we get confused with each other quite a bit. People will confuse hilarious. me for that singer all the time. But yeah, come out to the shows, Fort Mac. There we go. Well, thanks for coming on the show. Thank man. you very I much for having me. Oh, this was great. And I'll do a shameless plug add-on for you. Thank you, Renee Manners, Bailey's, and Lisa Hardigan for making this happen. Now, thank on, you. There you go. Now, on that note, Fort McMurray and the rest of the world with Buffalo, thank you very much for tuning in to another episode of the Mac City Morning Show. Really do appreciate it. Hopefully, you're having a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.